Hello again, this is the course of information system development and in this video I uh, would like to continue what we are discussing before which is about the form processing. So in the previous video you learn about how to create a sequence diagram. So for this uh, video we are going to continue with the filters. In one example that you got before the mid exam there was an example how to make a kind of table and you can create also one filter using the JavaScript. Yeah. But for now, we are going to learn how to make your basic first function based on the Django. Yeah. So it is common to generate a search function, although JavaScript has built-in functions, so we already saw in the previous section, there are some limitations. So the limitation is yeah, just use a particular string and if you want to get like numbers and if you want to do another kind of filters, yeah, you need to um, improve that one. So we are going to learn how can we do the basic filters and how can we do filters with query and how can we filters with Django filters. So there's a library in Django, we call it the uh, Django filters. So for this section, we will continue with the previous project, the user management. I guess if you still have your project, the user management, so just continue with this uh, slide, okay? So what is basic filters? In the basic filter, uh, we will use query to filter any inputs from user. So you already learned query, Okay, last time we learned um, one assignment. So I give you one assignment with some data and you are doing the query with uh, the SQLite. So how can we use that query in the form? Okay. So first we need to provide a form for a user. So we will learn how to create a form. I guess you know in the HTML section, we will learn how to create a form. And in this section, we are going to use that kind of form. Okay? So the, maybe it's a very simple form. You can improve it later. And the form should include any input that we want user to filter the data. So in the form, yeah, you can do like submit or yeah, reset and other basic function. And using the form, yeah, you can filter the data. So for this example, uh, we will use get method. Yeah, so I will explain later about cat and push. So for the first time, let's make one new function in the fuse.py. And uh, I think you know that every uh, function that we are going to utilize will be located in the user management, user MGMD. So let's see, uh, I have this code, it's a source basic. So I already prepared my uh, PyCharm. Okay, you can go to your PyCharm and then check the user MGMD and then you can go to the views. Okay, so this is the view section. And the last one is the delete member. So after the delete member, you can put the search basic here. Okay, so I will explain later what is it. And after you have this, yeah, let's create one more link okay so the link will be named as search basic and you need to put this link in the urls.py so you can go to the urls.py and then create one more link here okay so it, the name of the link is search basic and we are going to execute the search basic let's just yeah give the name search member okay and then I would like to uh, go to the next one, which is about the list search. Okay. So here is on an HTML file. Okay, so let's see. You are going to make one new HTML file. So it is in the template folder. Let's make one HTML file and the name will be list search. Okay. And yeah, you can just uh, paste the 
HTML file here. Okay, you can just follow the uh, code. And after that, let's see the result. So I think you can use this link. Okay, so you can run. Um, so I need to check. Okay, so I'm still uh, running this one. Okay, there is no issue with this. So, what is it? Hmm, I don't know. Okay. Yep. So we can get this result in our web page. Okay. You can see there is one more function here. So this is the basic search. Okay. Let's say I want to have AA. Okay, so you can see only one row, or if you want to check PB, okay, so the it's located in the first one, okay, so it's just only number two that appear here. So if I see, click CC, okay, nothing. Why? Let's take a look. So I give some explanation here. So the action refers to the URL link that you're going to point out. So you can specify the action in a form or you can use the previous example using post by using redirect. So if you still remember when we deal with the, uh, in the fuse.py, yeah. So most of those methods are using posts, okay. What does it mean post? Post. Okay, so those uh, function in Django, they use post instead of cat. But for this example, we are going to use cat. Okay, let's see one by one. For the search basic, you know, it has a request, so it means I will wait the request from the user. And after I get the, the user request, so if Q in request.cat, so what is Q? Okay, so we have this Q. It is related with the Q that you have here. So we put this Q. Okay, so I will let you know later. This Q is connected or is associated with the HTML file. So this Q, I would like to check if the Q is in request.cat. It means I want to know if there is Q or not. So you can see here, if I delete the queue, what happened? Yeah, it's error, okay? So uh, you need to put the queue in order to run the web, okay? So even though the queue is blank, then it, it is fine. But if you cannot show the queue, then yeah, it will be an error. Okay, so it's the same with what you can do in uh, Google, for example, okay. <clears throat> so when you click Google like this one, okay. So when you type something, for example, Django, okay. So you can see here search, then you have the S, X, S, R, F, and blah, 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 blah. So those kind of thing are uh, connected to the back end and the back end, or we call it the Django function or the Python function can try to figure out what is it and then what should we do when some kind of uh, query like this one appears. So that's also the same with the query that we have here. So I would like to get the query. Okay? I would like to get the query from the queue in the HTML file. So if you get Check this one, okay. Yeah, you can see there's a form. Okay, there is a form here, and the form is using the text, and the text is okay, Q. Okay, so the Q actually it is in the form, and after I know that it is in the form, then it will return back to the Python function. Okay, so here is the action. So we, you can get this action actually here. If you are doing some member such basic, so it is the action. So every time I uh, have this action, then I will use the method get, and every of the query will be retrieved 
to the use.py and I will put this get q into the variable q in the Python. So yeah, you have two sites. Okay? The first is the HTML file, which is on the browser side. And then this is the backend side. This is in the Python side. So every text in the HTML file will go to the Python side. Now, yeah, this is from the HTML file and then we will uh, retrieve, we will extract the value and we want to put it into the Python file. And I would like to give a message, you search for uh, percent %r, okay? So percent %r means I want to read, <coughs> read some files which is from this request. And I would like to filter the members, okay? What is the members here? So I would like to use the model member objects filter and okay. So you know that I'm going to use the first name, not the last name. That's why whenever you type something, it is only related to the first name, not the last name. And I would like to check if the first name contain the value in the queue. So queue is the result from the query on your uh, HTML file. Okay. So if it is correct, then you will get the members, but if it is false, then you will see that you submitted an empty form. Okay. So maybe uh, if you click this one, or maybe this is not, not okay, nothing here. Okay, so this it is an empty form. Mm, oh, something wrong with my, uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's, it's fine because it is related with the uh, it's related with the favicon ICO. Yeah. Um. Okay. I guess ah because I don't have any value, so it comes to error. So if you put this one a, okay, so it will show this one. So yeah, there's one weakness in this uh, very simple code. If you do not put any values that uh, it will go to yeah, some kind of this kind of error. Okay. And yeah, you want to render the HTML file and then the message will be in the message of the HTML file and the result of the members will be in the member. So you cannot put the query as empty at this moment. Okay. Yeah, you can put more function or more con conditional statement in order to avoid the empty query. Okay. So after you have this one, yeah, you will you are going to check check this one. Okay. So you are going to submit. Okay? So submit means yeah, after you have the form and or after you have the value in the queue, so you are going to submit it into the backend. So it means we are going to run this uh, function. The yeah, remaining of the things is almost the same, but uh, different is this one, the message. So the message here is about the message that you are going to use this one. So if you have the queue, then yeah, you will I'll always show this one, users for Person R. So it means everything that you want to search, it will appear like you know, what is the value in a queue. Okay? But if there is no queue, then you need to uh, you need to print this one. You submitted an empty form. But yeah, basically, if you cannot find the queue, then it will be error. Okay. So the remaining of the HTML file will be the same with the previous one. So you have the member, and it is in members. And then you want to show the ID, salutation, first name, last name, email, and then you have the update member and you have the add members. Now, we, in this form, we are using the get and post. Okay. The get and post method, it means yeah, it is a method how to handle some kind of query. In the get method, you will request the data from a specified resource. Okay and it will show the parameter in the link. So the query string is sent to the URL. So if you check this one, yeah, I want to search 
So you can see Q equals to A. If I want to search AA, okay, then you will see that Q equals to AA. So this kind of information is not secure actually. So you can see here in Google, you, you can see any like code. So it's a unique code. Okay. Whenever you search something in Google, they will automatically create this code. And then yeah, it will connect what is your uh, source and then what is anything related with the, I don't know what is EI, but the query, yeah, the query means, yeah, I want to know something related to Django. And order query after I have Django, and then yeah, I have something more related to this value. Okay, so maybe because I already have the previous uh, search, so it will be connected. Okay. So they, uh, it means in Google, they want to know uh, the sequence of your search. Yeah, I do not. I don't want to discuss this one, but you can see the structure in Google is similar with the get function. But in the post function, you uh, in the post method, it would, is different because you are going to submit your data to be processed for to a specified resources. Okay, so if you have your method with post, it means it will transfer the data by storing the HTTP message body and you can retrieve the parameter using variable. So what we already did before, if you check the related uh, like post before, so we always do, do this request dot post, request dot post. It means I just want to get the value. I would just want to get the parameter from the respective HTML without showing the data in the link. So without showing the data in this kind of link, I can also uh, do something related with the member list. And this one is of course more secure in compared to the cat. Okay. So here is the more explanation about the cat and post. So what we are going to check is cat request can be catch. It means yeah, you can save what you already did let's say i'm doing searching Django, and then after i do Django, i search again another terms then yeah it will be recorded or it will be cached and get request remain in the browser history okay so whenever you uh, request something in the web that will be saved in the browser history so you need to put one more statement in order to save those history. Get request can be bookmarked. If you know in the browser, in Google, Chrome, or in Internet Explorer, yeah, they have one function which is bookmark. And the request should never be used when dealing with sensitive data. Yes, you know, the link consists of these yeah, values. It means if you are using uh, some kind of the uh, your Tengnokcheng, for example, or yeah, your ID card number, then it will expose the sensitive data. So it is not recommended if you are using the get method for the sensitive data. And the get request have length restriction. So now the restriction is like 255 characters. You can type as long as you can, but it will not exceed 20. 255 and also you will have some kind of uh, cut cutting line okay then the Google for example you can see yeah if you have this one and then you have this one okay and then yeah, if you can check this one okay it's very long okay so it has a limitation so you cannot have a very long query for this cat request and the other things that you need to know is the get request should be used only to retrieve data. Okay, so it means if you want to save your data, it is not recommended. You you can use that one. Okay, so what we already did with the appending data, add some data or update data, we are using post, not cat. Okay, why? 
Yeah, it is not recommended because yeah, it can be dealing with the sensitive data. It can be dealing with some uh, risk or the security issues. So the get request should be used only to retrieve the data. However, we can also do with the post. Okay? Post never cache. So it means uh, the data that you uh, query will not be saved into your computer. So there will be no history. Okay? There will be no history if you use post. And the request cannot be bookmarked. You cannot save in your browser. And posts have no restriction on data length. Okay? So it's yeah, totally uh, safe because uh, any data length will be fine. Then maybe you will have question, then why we need to use cat and why we need to use posts? It, yeah, it depends. If you want to get the data from the users, let's say like Google, they want to know what you are looking for at Google, then get requests will be better. But if it is related with bank transaction, cash transaction, on online shop, or something with is related with money and ID and etc., then post will be better. Okay. So yeah, I already uh, mentioned about the queue. Okay, so the queue that you saw in the HTML file will be transferred to the Python file, and the input queue it will be the parameter for the query. So the this uh, yeah, if you are using the first name, then of course the parameter will be related to the first name. If you are using last name, then the parameter will be related to the last name. So if you want to filter according to the other attribute, you need to add or modify the query and also the input in the HTML file. So here, yeah, because I use the first name, then it just give you the query for this uh, first name. So you already know how, if you want to do with um, other query, or uh, yeah, let's say if I want to change this one last name, okay. So after I do this one, it will be reloaded. Okay. okay, let's see. Yeah, I think this one is finished. So let's see. If now I refresh, okay. Okay, uh, let's see blank, okay. So I want to check A. Okay. No A in the last name, right? Because we have only B and C. So if you check B, then yeah, it appears. And then if you see, then it appears only one, okay. So this is the things that you can modify if you are to, uh, you, if you are going to use another kind of query. So if you want to use multiple values, okay, then it is also available because if you were to use like uh, let's say I have the my far equals to one two three and my far equals to five, six, seven. It means I want to check if the uh, variable equals to one, two, three, and the variable also equals to five, six, seven. It can be one, uh, the same variable name, or it can be a different variable name. So you can see already in the uh, Google like this one. So this one is X, X, S, R, F. So it's something like you know, value here and then you want to know what is the source and you want to know what is the EI. So it will show the symbol N, okay? N. So it shows this symbol in order to know that your query are uh, associated with various variables, okay? So N, GSLCP, yeah, maybe it's not uh, easy to understand this one, like the client, okay? And then, the VED. So it means like if you put like Django this one, the Google will have like priority. What will be the first result after your search appear here? Maybe the web is uh, paying some money with the advertising, then it will appear here. Oh yeah, maybe for example, I say healthcare, okay? 
then oh okay maybe this is not uh, maybe just computer okay so yeah it shows something related with computer okay and uh, i don't know if it is related with tira yeah something that oh yeah there is no maybe the keyword is very broad so it there is no such a specific result for this one but if you have like mm, maybe you want to buy something like shoes i don't know is there any shoes name oh, okay so it's there is no so you can see if the the respective search, uh, the respective keywords are related with a specific company then it will appear the google ads okay and yeah you can also get uh, for example if you are doing with this kind of variable so you can get list okay? and the get list if you have a specific variable name then you can use the specific name like my far or if you have many variable name then you can just get list and it will uh, convert to a dictionary so when you have a dictionary then you can figure out what is this value and what is that value and yeah you can split all those values into the key and value you already learned about the dictionary section okay okay so next chapter is about the filters with additional packages uh, i guess uh, i will explain this in another video because yeah, we already have have the function the uh, some kind of perspective about the get and post so I will record another video for this additional section. Okay, thank you very much for listening.